What's up, everybody? Welcome to Barber Code. I am your boy, Zeta Barber. And I'm your girl, Coco. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here at NY Style Barbershop, ATL, Forest Park, Georgia. The one and only. What's going on, everybody? Man, what isn't going on? <laughs> well, if you notice right now, I'm wearing what the new norm is in America. You know what I'm saying we have to shield our faces with these face masks, doctor-issued doctor face masks, uh, to prevent uh, the spread of COVID-19, coronavirus. Right. Um, and we're, we're, we're open under specific conditions. You know, yeah. we have to wear the mask. Um, we've taken all the seating out of the shop. Um, it's kind of like a one client per barber mm -hmm. type of deal. So if you're not getting a cut, you kind of got to wait outside. Right, right, right. Keep so that, that distance. <laughs> The, the, the dynamic for the entire barbershop experience. I'm going to go ahead and take this off now. <laughs> the dynamic for the barbershop experience has completely changed. And, yeah. um, uh, do you think it's changed for the better? Because a lot of people are not comfortable with the new norm. And yet, as barbers, stylists, and uh, estheticians, we are somewhat like doctors in our fields. That's very true. Honestly, I think that it changes the dynamic on the client comfort basis because now they don't get to kind of sit and chill in this really, you know, um, really open setting and it's usually real low key, mm -hmm. but now it's it's kind of rigid. I feel like it's really strict about yeah, how, how we're moving. And I feel like it affects them on that part. But as far as the shop is concerned, I don't think it really affects it pos more positively because um, we, we already keep the specific standards that we need to keep to prevent the spread of diseases. That's kind of why we get licenses. Yeah. So the spread of diseases is never really an issue. Mm -hmm. So in a barber shop, it's kind of like, hmm. Yeah, it definitely changed the nuances for clients when they come into the barbershop. You can see it on their faces. Okay. And yet still, I do believe inside they recognize the uh, gravity of the situation. Therefore, they're calmed at the idea that certain changes were made in the barbershop just so they can get those, those services that makes them feel normal throughout this time. Because everybody's in this quarantine state. And right. nobody really is feeling like themselves, doing whatever they can do over, the, over social networking and with the little bit of people that they hold near and dear to them that's living in their homes or whatever, so have you. Like, these things are helping them feel normal, you know? Exactly. And I think that it does, for us, I think it helps the gravity of the situation and it helps people who are scared and very apprehensive about going out and getting mm -hmm. services during this time and the fact that we don't have seating the fact that we are taking these precautions um that are mandated by the state mm -hmm. but still <laughs> the fact that we are taking those precautions it puts people at ease it's kind of like okay i can kind of relax here and i don't think any diseases are being spread here yeah. even though they never were but it's all about the psychological yeah uh, point of yeah view. yeah the psychological logical aspect is right. what we are trying to protect because like I said being being in this quarantine state uh, people's state of minds are afflicted by this you know what I'm exactly. saying exactly like, they're scared to touch they're scared to talk they're scared right. to be around people right so when they do walk into the environment and they see like I said the environment has changed because of uh, the pandemic I think it, it, it sets them at ease you right. know um, and for me that's the best aspect that I can pull from this entire ordeal is the fact that I can I can ease the conscience of clients coming in. I can make them feel comfortable and normal, and you know what I'm saying at least smile right. about something. Exactly. Throughout this, this this time. Yeah, and and I think it's that one step toward being normal. You know, that one step toward the end of things. Mm -hmm getting yeah. a haircut and, mm -hmm. and carrying on about your day right. and not having to to really worry about. Um, keeping a distance mm -hmm. and all these other things. It's like, it's, I hope that people will gain value mm -hmm. in staying sanitized mm -hmm. as far as washing your hands properly mm -hmm. and washing your ass properly. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that people get that oh, aspect shit. out of it. But um, as far as this pandemic is yeah. concerned, I think that it is more psychological than it is physical considering the people that come in here every day aren't like, you know, they're not doubling over sick or mm -hmm. ill. Mm -hmm. they're, they're usually pretty healthy. So 
if if they do have any diseases or anything like that, we're taking the precautions we need to take to, so that they keep it to themselves mm -hmm. and we don't spread it with our tools mm -hmm. and different things like that. So I'm not really concerned, but I do think that um, it's a, it helps us because us staying open at this time and then people seeing that we're taking these precautions, it's like, okay, this is a business I know that I can come to during these times or during any type of mm -hmm. uh, pandemic or whatever's going on. And it hasn't always been the case. Uh, we have been shut down like most cities mm -hmm. around the country and possibly around the world. We have yes. been shut down, but fortunately here in uh, Georgia, they issued a uh, a cease of the shelter in place somewhat not not entirely but it gives it gave us the opportunity to uh to to get back into uh into operations and like uh coco said it's with um certain parameters you know we have to be a little more strict as far as how we approach our profession um but right. i feel like um that's something that we sh should always have adhered to. Like that's something that, right. like you said, why we obtained our licenses. And that brings me to the next subject at hand is how the government feels our essentiality is, exactly. you know what I'm saying, is in this, hot, in, in this entire ordeal. It's, it's awkward to think that, you know what I'm saying, we have to be schooled, we have to be uh, licensed, tested mm -hmm. um, for all of these different things. Exactly. under the sun and yet we're not considered to be essential enough to maintain operations of our business exactly that that's my thoughts on why we're shut or why on no why i don't think we should have been shut down right. because of that aspect of it yeah we go through so much to ensure that we keep our clients safe in the first place mm -hmm. so why is it that we aren't allowed to be open right and also, we stay in a very smaller part of town mm -hmm. as far as, like, you know, populace is concerned. Mm -hmm. We were pretty much the last uh, place to kind of get shut down. Mm -hmm. Like, we were shut down April 3rd, I yeah, think. April 3rd, yeah. yeah, April 3rd. Yeah, April 3rd. A lot of people have been shut down since, Before like, that. March. Yeah, I have you guys know? back in New York yeah. that's been shut down since mid-March. And exactly. it's horrible to think that we've gone through a damn near, what, three-week period of yes. out of work. Right. And these guys are still out of work. Right. Still, exactly. It's, that it's is very scary. Yeah, that's scary to think about, mm -hmm. especially when you're the type of person that um, isn't getting a, a stimulus check. You know, you may not have been a part of that tax, you know, paying taxes. You may not have made enough last year or um, just people who aren't on record mm -hmm. in general. Like you can't get unemployment either at mm -hmm. specific places mm -hmm. and especially booth rental places, mm -hmm. places where you are the sole proprietor of whatever business that you have mm -hmm. is like you you're accepting ownership over that you aren't gonna get unemployment there's no payroll that's coming down the chain there's no type of um what is it what do you call it there's no type of proof yeah there's no proof of income there because a lot of it's handled by cash unless you're writing down every single thing and keeping up with the amount of money that you make you aren't going to be able to receive benefits mm -hmm. during this time and it is scary to think about mm -hmm. it is because if i didn't you know file taxes last year i'm like oh crap like mm -hmm. would i be receiving this thing i believe you know? um they have a non-filers option within the uh, IRS uh, forms that you oh, can. Oh, that's dope. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely dope because, like you said, for people who, who haven't yeah. filed or have no proof that exactly. they're making an income, they can still be uh, supported by the government. I think that's a dope notion coming from our government, yes. you know I'm saying, given the stigmas that we have towards the American government. But I, at least I feel like they're trying in some way, shape, or form. Right. Some people might disagree. You know what I'm saying I feel like uh, in a capitalist country, like this is it's about getting your own anyway. Exactly. So, um, but nonetheless, um, that doesn't speak to the idea that all of these different uh, businesses, salons, barbershops, nail salons, esthetician uh, bars, things of that nature, like we're, they're shut down. Like we were shut down, and I look at uh, friends and colleagues and uh, people who was in the same business over social networking and, and I'm, I'm just seeing what they're going through and it's just right. like man like I, I just don't I just it's just hard it's just hard it's just hard yeah. to think about it it is really hard to like um understand where your mind would be you know mm -hmm. in that situation mm -hmm. or even just going through it it's like I couldn't imagine right yeah you know? I think about the amount of energy I put into running my business and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like and these people like they, they put some people put their all into opening up their barbershops exactly. or salons and 
now because of the COVID-19, like you have, you might have to close down. And imagine that your yeah. your, your, your family is uh right. affected it, by that. Right, it's, and and the people in the shop, you know, it does it affects everyone. So it's like imagine like having to shut down your business. And I'm a barber that is getting my clients, you know, from this business, and now it no longer exists. It's like, wow. I can tell you from the source, being a shop owner, that is one of the things that troubled me the most. Most people might think, like, damn, yo, Z probably felt like, damn, his shop is because I thought about, damn, I got four other people who don't have, like, a job right now. Right, exactly. You know, I'm like, yo, I'm telling you, when I... When I tell you I was heart wrenched at the fact that this was going on, I'm right. like really hurt by it. Like, yeah. it's, it's, at one point I was stuck. I was just like, "Shit, yo, what can I do?" And I could do nothing. You know what I'm saying I could do nothing. Pay us unemployment. Not just kidding. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> Boss I wish, man. Right. I wish. I wish I could have some form of like right. stimulus <laughs> coming from my yo, side. For real. No boo for it. No. Yeah, I'm saying that would have helped out. Help help us out. No, honestly, I think that that is where, you know, contingency kind of comes to play on an individual basis. Yeah. Because this is the type, this isn't the type of salon or barbershop where you're responsible for the money that we make. Mm-hmm. We are responsible for the money that mm-hmm. we make. So in the given that something like this does happen and everybody is affected, it doesn't really fall and on you like this you know we all have our own individual like clientele you know we need to keep in touch with those people mm-hmm. make sure they're doing all right call those people um for you know alternative um methods or mm-hmm. any, anything and just touch bases with them and let them know what's going on with the shop mm-hmm. i think that's our responsibility just as much as it is yours because of the dynamic of the shop mm-hmm. you know if it were a um commission-based salon or if it were something where we were getting paychecks then we would have a plan to do unemployment and all mm-hmm. these other things because we have a payroll circuit but mm-hmm. it's just like the dynamic of the shop is not like that so right. more responsibility falls on us as the other barbers like I wouldn't just like I wouldn't expect the shop to bring customers to me automatically mm-hmm. without doing any work I wouldn't expect you to you know, spearhead my contingency plan. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm, know, that's mm-hmm. about my spending and how I'm carrying on and the, the money that I've made so far. So I That right there yeah. goes to show you to have a good shoulder, head on your shoulder, excuse me, good head on your shoulders right there because not a lot of people think like that. Not, not a lot of people feel like they can take their own responsibilities and put that weight on their own shoulders. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Especially working in a barbershop because a lot of people in barbershops or not people, barbers, or stylists and salons feel like uh, their salon or barbershop is responsible for spearheading, you know what right. I'm saying, their contingencies. That's true. I, I do see that a lot. But I feel like those people a lot of times don't make it. Mm-hmm. They don't last uh, when they're expecting uh, or when they feel like they're owed something by just being present. Mm-hmm. It's like it doesn't work like that. You kind of yeah. got to do the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of it, you know, to, to get the ball rolling. Um, but I say hey, to each its own. Mm-hmm. If somebody does make it with that attitude, yeah, I mean, congratulations, congrats, you know, man. congrats. But you, there's no, I highly doubt that they did that with no real marketing for themselves, with no real like energy mm-hmm. behind what they're doing, without really putting themselves out there. There's no way, mm. especially not in a booth rental setting. There's right, no right. way you're gonna make money. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna be like, well. You guys don't have any clients for me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I heard somebody say something like this. They was like, if you can look over to another barbershop in your, uh, if you can look over to another barber in your barbershop or a stylist in your salon and you can see that their chair is in constant rotation with clients, you have to then look at yourself and be like, yo, what am I doing wrong? Because right. that person right there is getting money. Right. You know, like. Exactly. And I don't even look at it as like a detriment to myself, like looking at myself negatively, like what am I doing wrong? I look at it like I'm going to study what you're doing right. because I want what you have. Like I want yeah. that constant rotation of clients. I'm going to see how you moving and how you doing it. And I'm going to take notes. I don't even think about it like what am I doing wrong mm-hmm. or how can I? I look at it as um, how can I fix this? How can I um, tweak my method to match 
you know, the output or yeah. to really match the, you know, amount of thing or, or what can I say? The amount of success, I guess. Yeah. How can I match my, my methods to I think, get that success? I think in, in, at that point where people start looking at themselves, like, where did I, where did I go wrong? Is those people who feel like they have that chip on them shoulders where right. they feel like they should be getting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. When someone like else old, is getting. Yeah, they yes. owed something. And it's yes. like, bro. Right. It Versus like understanding that. that you it takes time and consistency to right, get right, to right. that. Right. That's very true. Maybe mm -hmm. that is it. That yeah, those, yeah. those same type of people think that they're But old. then like like yourself, you don't look at it like that. You you look at it like, well, I'm learning from you. What you're exactly. doing something right. So let me pick some of that up. Exactly. Um, and that's how I approach all things, to be honest, all things in my life, uh, whether it has to do with skill or it, just anything. Mm -hmm. Even if I just saw randomly somebody made something on Facebook that I was unsuccessful making, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, well, what did you do about this? Mm -hmm. and, you know, all the, everything. Like, I never approach anybody with the negative tone. Mm -hmm. I never approach anybody like, oh, well, you know, mine didn't work out, so whatever. <laughs> like... <laughs> that complete it has nothing to do with that other yeah, person yeah. so why would i bring that energy to the table mm -hmm. i'm always gonna approach it just with admiration honestly yeah. if somebody's doing something that i can't do yeah i'm like oh i want to i am fascinated i want to know how you did that yeah yeah so what are some of the things that you changed during this uh, pandemic? Oh, that's a good question some of the things that i've changed um well of course i wear a mask <laughs> When I have uh, clients or when we have clients in rotation in the shop, um, some of the things that I've changed. Gloves also. With wearing gloves, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gloves, yeah, I definitely. Well, I was already wearing gloves. Mm -hmm. I was wearing gloves like, with specific things, especially when I'm working with a razor yeah. and stuff like that. I definitely I use gloves. gloves a lot when I'm using like shaving creams and doing right. shaves and exactly. stuff like that. Exactly, yeah, doing shaves, yeah. But I, I use it on every client because, mm -hmm. you know, hairlines. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, that's pretty much when I really I was already using gloves, so that wasn't an issue. Honestly, I can't say that much has changed besides wearing masks yeah. because it's still the same sanitation standards. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anything's changed. <laughs> it's and that just was my less point people. in asking that question. Yeah, you know? there are less there's less people sitting around the shop. Yeah. But other than that and wearing a mask, nothing. That I literally my, changed nothing yeah. about, <laughs> yeah. and that about was my, my purpose routine. for that question because Going back to how essential we are, I don't think uh, the higher ups, quote unquote, right. you know what I'm saying, really understand what's happening. Or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. And it's like we're still professionals at yeah. the end of the day. And you're a small business owner. I feel like that is. A, I remember we we had this conversation too, where I was like, mm -hmm. I feel like the matter of essential or non-essential should also focus on the people who have to be open mm -hmm. or they would have to close down their business mm -hmm. you know mom and pop shops these shops that are definitely like they're turning profits but not on a walmart mm -hmm. scale you know not on a franchise scale mm -hmm. so these people definitely have to open their doors or they're not going to make any money and i think that's the issue right it's like almost saying that they're giving the the big corporations the opportunity to operate and calling them bailouts and calling them essentials where mm -hmm. We're the ones who like the backbone of, of, of the economy, small right. businesses in, in, in cities and things like that. Like look at Forest Park, for instance. Right. It's not a big city. Exactly. And uh, these small it's businesses run are by what, small businesses. Exactly. It is. I, and I feel like that, that a lot of those, the taxes from these mm -hmm. businesses are what's making this um, city kind of go around. Mm -hmm. And the fact that certain people just all around the country, small businesses mm -hmm. will have to close their doors because there's not enough money mm -hmm. for from the bailouts mm -hmm. <laughs> for them. It's, it kind of sucks because mm -hmm. it's like, I feel like it should definitely be based off of, you know, your profits from last year or just something that will give smaller people or and smaller businesses a chance in hell, you know, in all of this mm -hmm. versus Walmart, who's mm -hmm. turning millions of dollars, billions of dollars, you know, in profits. And it's like, I understand that you are a franchise and there's a million of you, you know, plastered everywhere, mm -hmm. but you should, you have the contingency plan to kind of, you know, cut back on this, trim the fat right, here and there, right, right, lay right. off, you know, right, all right, of these right. things to where you can save yourself money. As a mom and pop shop, who am I going to lay off? Right. You know, my son, mm -hmm. you know, or whoever is working mm -hmm. for me right now that's pretty much family mm -hmm. or a very close-knit amount of people that I probably need. I only have the people on hand that I need. Mm -hmm. There's nobody I can lay off mm -hmm. and there's nobody I can hire mm -hmm. 
because this is just the dynamic of my business. Right, so right. why am I not put in the front of the line of these people who already make billions of dollars, mm-hmm. you know, in profits a year, and I'm only making, you know, a couple hundred thousand, maybe, right. Right. as maybe. a business. Yeah. Right, as a business a year. So I, I don't get why there wasn't just more, I guess, thought put into it. Mm-hmm. But given the gravity of the situation, they just kind of wanted to put something out. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it showed. And I, it kind of sucks that... A lot of people, you could just see where people's priorities lie in this situation because um, a lot of politicians were not in the business of helping individual people. They were mm-hmm. not in the business of helping small people. And the first idea that they came out with for this bailout was trash. Right, it right. was completely for big businesses. Right. It had nothing to do with smaller people. Right. And it was banking on, you know, the hope that big businesses would put this money into their employment. Mm-hmm. But no. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. You're going to keep the, who's ever laid off, laid off, mm-hmm. and you're going to take that money and do whatever mm-hmm. you need to do with it and reallocate mm-hmm. those funds. And so for that reason, I really think that small businesses should either have stayed open mm-hmm. Or they should have been put to the front of the line because, Mm -hmm. like, really, they ran out of money and now there's not enough for these businesses and some of them are going to have to shut down. Mm -hmm. It That's really, really, it just looks bad on our economy and on our country. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what more can we be, what more can people laugh at? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, I would uh... I would give Brian Kemp, uh, Governor Brian Kemp of Georgia, definitely a pat on the back because I feel like yeah. even though he's getting the slack for uh, opening up uh, Georgia, right? I think he thought about those those aspects of the cities and small businesses right. that feed those cities, and yes. you know, so just thinking about how much he wouldn't have to uh, separate for people who's lost exactly. by just providing them with the opportunity to work. Exactly. You know? Instead of fighting over, you know, this money that they're pulling out of their ass later. Right, right, right. It's like, I'm going to keep, you know, my state open because I understand that we need to make money. Right. I understand that this is important. And the people that are complaining about it are the people who can sit at home and work. Right. They're the people who have uh, all these benefits where mm-hmm. they could just, you know, sit at home and chill mm-hmm. and be scared of the corona. Mm-hmm. But I don't have that luxury, Neither you know? Like, yeah. Exactly. It's like I'm one of those people that are glad that we didn't close until the third. Mm-hmm. If we had been closed until mid like mid-March, I don't know if I would still be, you know, a hairstylist. Right, right. I might be contemplating going to get one of those nine to fives. <laughs> like, <laughs> crazy. I mean, just, yeah, it's really crazy to think about. Had he gone, you know, one way instead of the other mm-hmm. and then opening early, I, I don't see that as a bad idea either. I did not. I was like, you know, finally. So to all my people out there, barbers, stylists, estheticians, you are essential. At least in my heart, I know you are essential. And yes. I hope it, like whoever's watching from the higher ups, again, I'm going to quote that because I hate that term, um, can see that, you know, like we are needed in, in the community. Um, people are, are lost. You, so, you somewhat lose right. your identity when you can't get a haircut or, or get your hair done. Like I I'm agree. not the normal me. You see these uh, these advertisements with celebrities on TV, like DJ Khaled looking yes, great, I was crazy. Just about to say like, that. <laughs> DJ Diddy Khaled, his he need his barber. Like, oh man, save that man. DJ Khaled need them fibers, man. Yeah, telling, <laughs> you telling everybody to stay home. You need somebody to come save you, bro. Right. Um. <laughs> but um, I get it though. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's scared right now. Like right. There's, there's so much. Uh, I, I think it's fear mongering to some extent. I, oh, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I think it's fear mongering to some extent. And I don't want to offend nobody. You know what I'm saying? Who's been like severely affected by COVID? Because I know there's definitely been some. Um, some casualties to uh to the virus and you know what I'm saying my condolences to whoever lost someone to this event but at the end of the day and when you're talking about the scale mm-hmm. of of diseases in place that's hitting people throughout the course of the modern day people are still dying heavily from the flu right exactly you know? and nobody's and, staying and home running to to the Right. Nobody is shutting down cities because of that. And also I think about like the um, the numbers in comparison to. OK, so there's like tiers for diseases and or cause of death mm-hmm. in America. And, you know, at the top, you definitely have heart disease. Mm-hmm. You have then 
diabetes Mm -hmm. and hypertension. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you have um, accidents, Mm -hmm. you know, just regular old things that just happen to people Mm -hmm. randomly. All of these things are above where COVID-19 is, Mm -hmm. where flu and pneumonia are. Those numbers are very similar to the numbers from last year, Mm -hmm. the amount of people that have been dying. Please understand that too. Trust like, her, she's the Google guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I, I love to look at these things because I, you know, I don't watch the news. I, I don't watch um, CNN, all those other places because there's always an agenda to being pushed, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Me too. And I think with COVID nineteen, it's definitely fear mongering because it's not matching the severity of the disease. It's not matching what they say on TV and also the world around you. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, I think it's just turning everybody into a gorefo because it's like, okay, on TV, they're saying, this is crazy. You know, you should stay at home. You should do this. But the CDC said to just wash your hands and keep your hands out of your face and, you know, kind of keep a safe distance from people. And then that turned into, oh, well, you know, now I was airborne and I was this and I was that. It's just like, what do we really, can we just Mm -hmm. calm down and not say anything Mm -hmm. before we know, you know, until we know the severity and the entirety of this disease. Mm -hmm. And then I also look at the number of people who are actually dying from COVID-19 and COVID-19 associated deaths. Please understand those two terms. They are very different because you see um, somebody or you see this headline that says child dies with coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Not from coronavirus, Mm -hmm. not because of coronavirus, child dies with coronavirus coronavirus Mm -hmm. so she could have died or he could have died from anything else in this world but because they had coronavirus when they died it is considered a coronavirus associated death Mm -hmm. so thus where all of those numbers are coming from all of these people are not dying specifically from COVID-19 and even in the way that COVID-19 works you know it's very close to that of AIDS it's very immunodeficient. So it takes from you, it lowers your immune system, and it makes you susceptible to other diseases. Mm-hmm. So it works in that way also. And that's something that I thought about too. Because you ever see that commercial where they have that new medicine for HIV and AIDS, mm-hmm. and it says that if you can keep your T cell count up yeah. high enough to where you're undetectable, to yeah. where you have no symptoms exactly. and all these things, yeah. then you can't spread the virus. So how is it that, Yo, I hear that you that can ad- spread this virus with no no symptoms. I hear that ad all the time. Exactly. So I'm it's really repeat. skeptical about just the the situation itself and how America is spinning it. And you would think that in the the wake of this disease and this pandemic that they would be encouraging people to boost their immune system. They would be encouraging people to eat better, to exercise better, to get fresh air, to drink water. Mm-hmm. They don't promote any of these things. They still aren't promoting any of these things. What are they doing? They're changing ads for fast food to match COVID-19 mm-hmm. standards mm-hmm. with this contactless mm-hmm. <laughs> delivery <laughs> and this contactless drive through And we're keeping a safe distance here at Burger King. Just cracked my head. Just <laughs> see what I'm saying? It's like, how is that preventing me from getting sick? And if I did have coronavirus, why on earth would I want fast food? Mm. I'm not understanding how that's preventing me from getting sick, and or like pacifying me mm-hmm. in this situation. Mm-hmm. So I just look at that in its entirety. It's like the things that you watch every day, the things that you see every day. This is what <laughs> this is what they're telling you and then this is what is happening on the side. And then you have like officials, government officials telling you these things like, "Oh, coronavirus related deaths do not mean it is because of coronavirus. Mm-hmm. This person may have died from a car accident mm-hmm. or something that can actually happen more often apparently mm-hmm. according to statistics like mm-hmm. i could still just randomly uh fall and hit my head and die in my house <laughs> do, you think, do you think that um uh big companies like say for instance fast food fast food chain companies mcdonald's burger king you think they all down with this fear mongering the spreading of the fear i don't think that they are 
down as far as like um adding to the spread of the fear mm-hmm. i think they're just figuring out how they can still get money during right. the pandemic right. right i think it's just a, all a matter of like okay this is what the new just trend is right. so let me say that i'm about it just like how we're you know um we're in cohesive with the standards and we're wearing masks mm-hmm. and all these things i don't necessarily think that it, we have to do that mm-hmm. but we're doing it to appease clients mm-hmm. more so Hmm. Yeah, and I think they're just doing that to appease uh, their customers. It's like, we understand that you guys are now sitting at your house. Well, guess what now? We have contactless delivery here at Chick-fil-A. So <laughs> That makes me wonder about Is exactly it? what we're doing. You know, like, wow. You just, you just hit me over yeah, the head. Yeah, man. It, it, like, I look, these are the things that I look at. Like, this, this is what I see. And this is exactly why people, I respond the way I respond to certain things. Mm. And, I mean, I am, I, um, you know, I know I understand I have older people in my family. I do understand also that people are affected by this. Don't get me wrong. Coronavirus is real. I don't think that it's, it's something that it's not. Mm-hmm. I understand that it is a real disease. And I understand that people are dying from disease. But, you guys have to understand that people die from diseases every year. Mm-hmm. Every single year. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't make it. A lot mm-hmm. of people do not make it. And for that reason, I just feel like these things don't just go away. Mm-hmm. Because there's something now plastered all over the news. You know, like people still die from swine flu. Mm-hmm. That's not on the news anymore. But it's still out there. People are still dying from rabies. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? Barbara like, code. Barbara code. Yes. People are still dying from all of these other diseases every single day. And that cannot be ignored or, you know, put into the same category as, you know, uh, coronavirus when it isn't really that. Because especially when people, one of my pet peeves is when people post um, blogs and articles without reading them. Mm -hmm. And then they're just using it to push their own agenda. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is exactly why my kids don't go outside. (laughs) Like, what? (laughs) This has nothing to do with, you know, coronavirus. This yeah. girl's death or this this guy's death had nothing to do with coronavirus. Or, you know, they say things like um, there was an article about this barber that died from coronavirus. I remember. And the article says that he had it for, like, months. <laughs> like, he had it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And he had symptoms for a while. Like, months. You know, two months. And he was doing all types of things before not going to people's houses. Like he was doing home clients, but that wasn't how he got coronavirus. He had already had it. And they also said in the article that he went to a whole barber competition and competed in a barber competition while having coronavirus. You're doing all of these things while you're sick Mm -hmm. and you're not taking care of yourself and all of these things. And then eventually you die. Mm -hmm. But then the headline says barber does home clients and dies from coronavirus Mm. so it's like people who aren't reading the article are saying like you guys need to stop um going to people's houses Mm -hmm. you guys need to calm down with that and blah 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 and it's like that that isn't what killed him and that's not how he caught coronavirus That had nothing to do with, yeah, exactly. Like a mistranslation of what's really going on. So much misinformation. And it's it's clickbait, Mm -hmm. of course, for the article. But people on Facebook don't understand that. You know, and you using Facebook, and and that's crazy. That's one of the most thriving sources Mm -hmm. of information nowadays that people have. That people go to. Yeah, go to. You're not even really going to an actual source. You're not looking up statistics. Exactly. You're not going to the the cdc website and and really like digging through the files everybody's looking at that one little half-assed post that says man dies dot 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 coronavirus or covid 19 exactly and they're like share 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 share, share, share. and putting their own little two cents on top of it and it's just like did you even read the article Mm -hmm. like oh my gosh it reminds me of a time that somebody put up something about vaccines and how they cause autism in the article when you click it it literally says Vaccines don't cause autism. And the guy is going on a rant on Facebook about how it does cause autism. And I'm like, then why would you share an article that literally says it doesn't? Mm -hmm. 
I'm like, you're not helping yourself out right now. And also, you sound crazy. <laughs> I'm like, this is, did you even read the article, sir? Right, because right. You, it doesn't sound like you did at all. And it's, it, that is how I feel when I see all these people sharing things constantly. Just all this misinformation. And it's like the article. Or, or there was one also where like a friend of mine, she was like, oh, man, did you hear, you know, coronavirus is causing blood clots in your lungs now. And it's crazy. And I clicked the article, you know, just one article at random because I can't find any actual statistical information on it. That's where I go first. So you have this guy who has pre-existing conditions, you know, comorbids, and they make already make him at risk for coronavirus and other diseases. So you put all of that in the article, and then it says scientists, you know, then you have this headline, the clickbait, that says scientists are baffled blood clots found in the lungs of patients. It's like, this is, let's dial it down a little mm-hmm. bit. This is one person, and this is on an individual basis. Mm-hmm. It is not something that's going to happen to you if you get coronavirus. Mm-hmm. And actually, I know several people that I'm close to who's have who has had coronavirus and recovered from it already. Mm. And that is my biggest thing. I have never been, it's not that I am don't think that I can catch it. I mean, I don't know. I don't get sick, but... Even if I did get sick, I would probably survive. Mm -hmm. Just based off of, you know, my overall health and my age. All of these things that are pretty much puts me in a pretty good position to live. So I I don't think that people don't understand that part of it. People aren't understanding the amount of recoveries that are happening. Mm -hmm. Right now, case-wise, you know, cases where they're beginning to end talking about people having coronavirus and recovering from it, it's 70-30. 30% of the people die, 70% of the people live. And let's not forget that 30%, within that 30% of the people who die, a lot of those people have pre-existing, pre-existing conditions. Mm-hmm. And most of those people are probably dying from the pre-existing conditions mm-hmm. and not from coronavirus. Yeah. yeah. So once you put all of that into like into your mind and you really just like break it down it's like wow that's it's not a lot of people mm. it's not uh, population wise yeah that's not any more people than regular that die every freaking year mm-hmm. it's just not put on the tv right and because it's not put on the tv people automatically assume that it's okay mm-hmm. and vice versa once something is on the tv people assume that it's this big thing and it's uh has to take precedence over everything it's like i really just don't think it's that serious yeah <clears throat> i honestly don't I'm having uh, I'm seeing guys on a social network and uh, one barber in particular, Marvy, Marvy the barber. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He's pretty popular right now. He's like barbers, that guy. But anyways, he's uh, <laughs> look him up. Like you know what I'm saying, he's pretty he's pretty influential right now. Um, his voice is definitely being heard. But he's in a position right now where he's trying to get a petition signed uh, for barbers in uh, his area to see if they can uh get some form of uprising to open up barbershops because yeah. uh, these guys out there really struggling. I seen a video where he's sitting outside his barbershop just looking at it, you know, and I'm here at my barbershop sitting in front of it, open sign on, and All I'm right. just like. Where is he from? Where, where is he? <sighs> he's from the north. He's from the uh, north. Okay. I'm sorry, Marvy, man. Like, if you watch this, bro, I know where you're from, but I forgot it, man. But Yeah, like, I'm sure it's like a big city. If yeah, it's still definitely. Closed, yeah. I don't want to say a wrong city. I had I had a city in my mind, but I just don't oh. want to say it. Darn, we're going to look you up, Marvin. Yeah, yeah. You'll definitely <laughs> look him up and get that information yeah. uh, proper for next time. But um, I, that, that idea that these guys are like have to petition to open up their business, it's right. just retarded. It is. And it isn't. It's, I hate saying, like, it's not fair. But <laughs> no, <it's laughs> that's how I feel. Like, no, it's not fair. It, it isn't. Because you're really put in between a rock and a hard place. Mm-hmm. Because it's like you want to get to a point where you appease your clients so you don't want to do things like home um, services and things like that because it can be bad for your business um, PR-wise. Yeah. Because people are like, he's still doing um, haircuts mm-hmm. out of his house mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. You know, you have those good Samaritans <laughs> that are that feel like 
they don't want to get their hair done by you anymore because of how you move in during this time. Yes. People really will feel that way. Which adds to and, that psychological yeah. aspect of what's going on. Exactly. And when you're influential like that, I feel like you are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. But I can also say that being present on social media can help you mm -hmm. during these times because if you're a YouTuber and all of these, thi and all of these things, you can get money from... Um, uh, the certain amount of people that follow you, a certain amount of views that you get, you can make money that way also mm -hmm. if you're already influential as a service provider. Mm -hmm. So you can still kind of make money during this time, but if you're not really on social media, if you're not really influential, if you're not able to get that residual income from sitting at home, you're, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like you have to do home clients. Yeah. You have to kind of grab that chicken when you see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've seen an, an article where uh, I believe two women were ran down on because they were doing home services. Uh, like you said, a good Samaritan yeah. like ratted on them. And whatever uh, fines and penalties that they're suffering from, yeah. that, it, that, it, shouldn't, like, have really? like, it right. shouldn't have been like that. I agree. It's like and treating us like bootleggers in the 30s or something <laughs> like that. I said that too. Like, let the prohibition begin. Right. You know what I'm <laughs> and honestly, coming from that you know, kitchen beautician lifestyle mm -hmm. and coming from having to do hair out of my house, mm -hmm. I def that definitely hits a spot for me. That's definitely triggering for me because ha if I could just think back to all the times where people had a chance to call, mm -hmm. you know, state board or whomever and um, rat on me or, you know, just to say what I'm doing, that could have hurt me in regards to even getting my license. Right. You know, if you get a uh, hit on things like that, you can get to a point where you're not able to get a license. Yeah, yeah. That can happen. So it's just like, I just think about people's livelihood. Like, while you being a good Samaritan and you chilling and you think you're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. it's like, but what about this woman's kids? Right. Now, on top of not being able to make any money during the COVID-19, they're slapped with a $1,000 fine. Mm-hmm. And then, like, who's helped? I mean, maybe the Samaritan feels like, you know what I'm saying, they helped their family because they stopped this person from potentially spreading, you know what I'm saying, a virus. Uh, because a lot of people are nowadays associating uh, asymptomatic uh, uh, symptoms with uh, the COVID-19. Uh, like, a like lot of people what? are... Just the, the fact that you know you're not showing any symptoms. Oh, being asymptomatic. And, and that's another thing too that I wanted to talk about. That whole thing, like you not having any symptoms and also having coronavirus. The thing that grinds my gears about that <laughs> is that, on one hand, we're telling people not to come in and get tested if you don't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. If your symptoms are not unbearable, stay at home mm -hmm. and use over-the-counter medication. What? You can use over-the-counter medication for this crazy pandemic that's killing everybody? Does that sound cohesive to you? Yeah, we flex <laughs> with the bomb drops, yo. Right, right. It's like... I <laughs> 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 oh, good... I he's can't home. make a he's good home, bomb he's dropping home. voice. Yeah. He's home. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, wow. That's what doctors are telling us to do. Take care of your flu at home. Mm-hmm. Like you already doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And keep everything clean? Oh, okay. Mm. It's like, duh, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And also, um, with that being said, you have celebrities saying that they have COVID-19 and they don't have any symptoms and all these other things, and, you're, and they're saying that you can still spread it when you don't have any symptoms. How is that keeping people out of these hospitals where they have to get these patients who are severely affected, where they have to take care of these patients who are succumbing to their symptoms and the people who are actually dying from COVID-19? How are hospitals supposed to operate when you have Tom, Dick, and Harry coming in because they got a damn headache mm -hmm. and they want to know if they have coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And then the crazy part is, you're going to fuck around and get coronavirus because guess what? Everybody that's in that hospital has currently has it. So you're going into an epicenter for the disease mm -hmm. to get tested for the disease when you're not showing any symptoms. Mm -hmm. Why? Oh, because you got your just elbow on Instagram that just said he got it and he don't have no symptoms. So now I'm scared mm -hmm. and I might have it and I don't want to pass it to my baby. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to pass it because my grandma lived with me. Mm -hmm. And now I'm up at the damn hospital 
actually getting coronavirus. Oh, you're killing my brain right now, man. <laughs> I'm telling you that this is this is what's happening to people when you do these things, when you put things like this on TV and on social media. It's like, how are you supposed to regulate anything with all of these different aspects being spun, all these different stories being spun, all of these different takes and perspectives on it being spun? How the hell are you supposed to get any type of rain on a pandemic when you're when you're not cohesive about what you're telling your public? And this is why you need somebody who knows how to do their job. I ain't gonna lie, if there was a zoom in on the lens, you'll probably see a vein pulsing in my neck because I'm getting really vexed right <laughs> I now. I wish I could like zoom in and look at the camera like. <laughs> yeah, so this is why you need officials who can tell you to calm down. This is why you need officials who can help you get through this and who can just keep the public at bay. This is why you don't tell everybody everything. Mm. Everybody wants to like say the politicians are liars and all this other stuff. Well, when you asked your mom where babies came from the mm. first time, <laughs> was she real with you? Right, right, right. Was she real with you? Mm, mm, mm. Or did she just say some crazy oh, little story about oh, babies cool. coming from stores? <laughs> As I think about that. It's like, come on now. People's brains just cannot handle it, obviously, because look at the state of everything. Mm, mm, mm. Obviously, you can't handle the truth, America. <laughs> It's like we want we want to believe that we can, we want to believe that we can receive the raw and the real as soon as it comes in from our president and whoever the hell is sitting in the seat that is over us the powers that be we want to believe that we can write we want to believe that we can grasp from them what the truth is and what's really happening and what's going on out there and it's like you can't you just can't there's no way because as a citizen I mean, look at all these people that are afraid to leave their homes, you know? But uh, in reality, you leave your home every fucking day. Mm -hmm. It's like, weren't you just at Walmart last week, Tanisha? Weren't you just you know, there? And everybody touching on them watermelons that you buying now? But, oh. Uh, people, we got to wake up, man. Right, but you don't want to go out <laughs> into the world and get your toes done. I don't know.